Hey there internets, I'm Michael and today on 2 Player Game I'm going to teach you how to play Terraforming Mars by Stronghold Games which we'll be giving away between the 1st and 21st of December 2016 so be sure to click the link in the description to enter. To start setting up the game Lay your game board in the middle of the table. Then take the nine blue ocean hexes and place them in a stack over here. Then take the three white cubes. One, you'll place on the minus 30 degrees C space of the temperature track here. One will go on the 0% of the oxygen track here. And the final one goes on the one of the track around the outside of the board. This track serves two purposes. Firstly, you'll be using it with this white cube to track your generations, but you also use it to track your terraforming rating using one of the cubes of your own color. You need to place your terraforming tiles near the board. So these come in a couple of varieties. You have these double-sided ones that are city on one side and woodlands on the other. And then you also have these unique special ones that are all different and have a different symbol on the back. These relate to specific cards in the game. You also want to put your metallic cubes near the board and these are used for tracking your resources. They're not representing individual resources, instead the bronze represents one of any resource when it's in that resources space, silver is five and then the gold here is ten. Then get your project cards that have this backing and a front something like this and remove all the cards that have this little white arrow in a red circle in the bottom left corner. These are only used in the advanced game so once you've got a few games under your belt you'll be able to add these in to make the game all that more interesting. You'll then shuffle these cards up to make a deck that will just sit near the board ready to draw from. Give your first player the first player marker and then take your corporation cards these come in two different varieties you've got the colored back ones and the gray back ones now the colored back ones you will not use for your first game anyone playing their first game should use these gray back ones that are all beginner corporation they're all the same the colored back ones are all different so they add a little extra variety to the game also with the colored back ones there are two that have that red circle with the white triangle in that you'll remove unless you're playing the advanced version. If it isn't your first game, rather than being given one of these beginner ones, you'll just take all the other corporation cards, shuffle them up, and then deal two to each player. They then pick one of these to keep and use for the game, and the other one just gets returned to the box. And each player gets dealt 10 project cards. They'll decide which of these they wish to keep, but each that they keep will cost them free mega credits to do so. As well as their corporation card, each player will also need a player board and cubes of their colour. Then, based on your corporation, you may gain additional benefits. If it's the basic game you're playing, each player starts with one production in each thing, which you mark by placing one of your coloured cubes on the one space. This represents during the production phase you'll gain one of that resource. Anytime you see brown bordered, that means it's talking about production. Anytime it doesn't have that brown border, that means you're talking about the resource. So for example here, we have 42 mega credits starting for the beginner corporation, which we mark by putting 10 20, 30, 40, 1, 2. So 42 in the box for mega credits. If we were doing 42 steel, it would go in this box, titanium in this box, plant in the box down here, energy here, and heat here. Each player also places a cube of their colour on the 20 space of the outside track of the board. As well as marking your generations, 
this is your terraforming rating. So you start on 20, as you increase your terraforming rating, you move along the track. And that's the game all set up. So what is it you're actually trying to do? Well, unsurprisingly, it's all about getting victory points in this game. There are several ways you can do this. Firstly, your base victory points in the game is going to be your terraforming rating. So anything you can do to increase your terraforming rating will increase your victory points. The main way you'll do this is by increasing the terraforming properties. So every time you place an ocean out, that'll increase your terraforming rating. Every time you increase the oxygen, that'll increase your terraforming rating. Every time you increase the temperature, it'll increase your terraforming rating. You can also get victory points by doing milestones down here, which you'll have to pay mega credits to do, but when you do those, they'll each be worth five, and only three of these can be completed each game. And again, there are awards that you can fund that cost an increasing amount each award that gets funded. And if you have the majority of that award, you'll get five victory points. And if you have the second most, you get two. However, in a two-player game, only the person who has the most gets any points. Placing tiles on the board will get you points at the end of the game as well. Every one of these plant tiles that you control will give you one point, and every plant tile next to a city tile that you control will give you one point. So here, if I controlled these three plant tiles and this city tile, that would give me three points for the plant tiles and three points for the city tile. If someone else controlled a plant tile here, I would be getting three points for plant tiles, but four points for the city tile because the other persons would also increase the score of my city tile. The final thing that will get you points is some of these project cards will give you points. So for example, this one here has on it that it gives you points. You'll just add all of this up and whoever has the most wins the game. But when do you add all this up? Well, you do that once Mars is terraformed. The end condition for this game is that all of the terraforming conditions are met. So you need to have all nine of these oceans out you need to have the oxygen up to 14% and the temperature up to plus 8 degrees C. Once that's done, the game ends and you total up at the end of that generation. But what is a generation? Well, that's just the term they use for a round in this game. So the first thing you do is the turn order phase, except for you don't do this in the first turn. All this means is that you pass on the first player marker to the player to the left. Then you do your research phase. This is where you get more of these project cards into your hand. However, although each player gets dealt four cards, each card will cost you three mega credits to keep. So you choose which you wish to buy and which not. Any that you don't buy, you'll simply discard to the box. Then we move on to the bulk of the gameplay, which is the action phase, where each person chooses to take one or two actions and then play passes to the next person. And I'll go through all the different action options shortly. The final phase of a generation is production. And this is where you gain all your resources. And I'll come back to that once I've gone through the actions. So that's how a generation works. Once you've done your production phase, you then go back to your turn order phase. However, as I said, the turn order phase you skip during the first turn because you've already done it. Also, the research phase you skip during the first turn because you did this as part of the setup. So on your first turn, you actually jump straight into the actions. So let's talk about those now. The first choice of action I'm gonna go through is to play cards from your hand. The cost in mega credits to do so is in the top left corner 
of the card. If you can't afford to pay this, you can't play the card. Additionally, the next box next to that gives any additional requirements for playing this card. So, for example, this card here requires that there are three oceans in play. This one requires that you have two energy tags and the tags are the next box along. So this one gives you a building tag, an energy tag and a science tag. Then this one has a requirement of the temperature must be at least zero degrees C. This one, the oxygen must be at least 8%. And then there are also ones such as this, where it says it must be below a temperature rather than above. And you can have the same with oxygen and oceans, etc. So it does go both ways. Some cards require being played early in the game, some later. So if we go back to our original three cards here, you can see that there are three distinct types of cards. So firstly, we have these red cards. These are immediate effect cards. They have this down arrow here that represents when the card is played, you flip it over. The next cards we have are these green ones. These represent cards that have tags that will stay in play. So these tags will affect other cards. However, they will only have text in the bottom section, meaning it's an immediate ability that happens, much like these, but you get to keep the tags. Then finally, we have the blue ones. So as with the green ones, these will sit face up in front of you, but as well as having the immediate effect on the bottom, they will also have an ongoing effect at the top here. It'll either be an effect that's permanently in place, or it will give you an extra action that you can do. All these cards are very good for being full text description, as well as the symbology. But you can use the symbology to get an idea of what it is, and then read the text to fully understand the card. It's important to note that, as well as with the requirements not being met, if a card has that you must reduce something, such as this card here, you must reduce your mega credit and heat production, if you don't have the resources in order to reduce it, then you cannot play the card. So, what do these cards do? Well, they do lots of different things. For example, this one allows you to place an ocean tile. So you'd simply place an ocean tile out. And I'll go through that shortly when I go through the standard actions. Others will give you victory points or give you resources that you'll add to your player board. Any that give you something with a brown border, as I mentioned earlier, increase your production. So this one increases energy production. So you'd move the cube to two. There are lots of different cards and they are all unique. There are no duplicates. So there's a lot of variety in those. When playing a card with a building tag, you may pay some of the cost or all of the cost using steel. And each unit of steel you use is equal to two mega credits. So here I could use four as eight of the 16, and then the rest of the eight would have to come from my mega credits. And similar to this is that whenever you play a space card with this star tag, you can use titanium to pay for it. And each titanium is worth three mega credits. So I mentioned a moment ago about cards giving you actions. So when I play this card, for example, it has nothing on the bottom. It has no immediate effect. So it would do nothing when the card is played. However, it does have an action at the top here. So this would take one of your two potential actions each turn. So the action here would be to spend seven mega credits in order to increase your energy production by once. However, each of these actions on a card, you can only do once a generation. You mark it with a cube of your color to show that you've used it. I also just mentioned standard projects when I was talking about placing oceans. So we'll go through each of the standard projects that you can do. 
and each of these would take up one of your actions for the turn. So firstly, you can sell patents, which is discarding cards from your hand to get one mega credit per card discarded. You can build a power plant, which means that you pay 11 mega credits to increase your energy production by one. You can hit Mars with an asteroid, which costs 14 mega credits and will increase the temperature. Simply moving up one space on the temperature track each time you do this. If you move into one of the spaces that has a extra effect here, so for example here if you move to minus 24 you and you alone get to increase your heat production by one. And of course raising the temperature is a global objective so by doing that you increase your terraforming rating. Then you can build an aquifier, which allows you to place an ocean for 18 mega credits, which means that you take one of these blue ocean tiles and place it on one of these shaded hexes that are reserved for oceans. So you can't play anything but an ocean hex on those unless the card specifies otherwise. So here, playing an ocean we just place it there and of course that's a global objective so we increase our terraforming rating next you can place greenery for 23 mega credits and this will also increase the oxygen so when placing a greenery tile you must place it adjacent to a tile you control unless in this situation you don't control any yet in which case you can place it where you want Whenever you're placing one of these tiles on the board, as I should have said when we place this ocean here, you gain what's underneath. So if I go here, I would gain one plant. If I go here, I'd gain two plants. If I go over here, I would gain a titanium and a plant. So with this plant, I can go anywhere. So I'd go here and I get two plants. So I place a cube of colour on that plant to represent that I have placed this greenery tile. Now, whenever you place a greenery tile, you increase the oxygen as well. So I would simply move the oxygen up one step. If I was moving it to the 8% point where there's the temperature gauge here, I would also then increase the temperature by one. Each time I increase the oxygen, because this is a global parameter, I would also increase terraforming rating by one. And finally, the last standard project you can do is to build a city. For 25 mega credits, you get to place a city tile and increase your mega credit production by one. So placing a city works much like with placing greenery, except for it doesn't have to be adjacent to a tile you've already placed. So I don't have to go there. So I could go over here, for example, and again, marking it with my colored cube. It's important to note that there are these reserved spaces. So we've got Noctis City here is the only thing that can be built in this space. And you can only do that if you have the card that allows you. And there are two other spaces off in space floating around that are the same way. So that's then how you place a city. And again, of course, getting whatever's underneath. So I would gain a plant for doing that. As well as using a standard project to place a greenery tile, you can also use a different type of action. And this is converting plants to a greenery tile. So if you have eight plants, you can convert them into a greenery tile. So you simply remove the eight plants and that gives you a greenery tile that you then place in the same way as when you did the greenery standard project. And of course, placing a greenery tile would increase the oxygen, which would increase your terraforming rating, which increases your points. And along the same lines, as well as doing eight plants for a greenery, you can do eight heat to raise the temperature. Again, this uses one of your actions. You simply remove the eight heat and increase the temperature, which increases your terraforming rating. And then the next action available is to complete a milestone. So to do this, it will cost you eight mega credits, no matter how many have already been done. But you can only do a maximum of three. 
So there are different options. If you've reached 35 on your terraforming rating, you can complete the terraformer. If you control three cities, you can complete the mayor. If you control three greenery spaces, you can complete gardener. If you have eight building tags down in front of you, you can complete the builder. And if you have 16 cards in your hand, you can complete planner. You'll simply pay the mega credits and then mark them as done. And that'll get you five victory points at the end of the game for each milestone you've completed. And the final action option is to fund an award. So the first award that gets funded costs eight mega credits to do so, second 14 and the third 20. The different award options are landlord, so this is whoever controls the most hexes at the end of the game will get five points. Banker, whoever has the most mega credits production will get five points. Scientist, whoever has the most science tags would get the points. Thermalist, whoever has the most heat. So this isn't heat production, it is heat. And then finally, Miner, whoever has the most steel and titanium combined. So it may be that whoever funds this isn't the person who then gets the points. So I might fund the landlord, but then someone else actually ends up controlling more hexes than I do. So when taking actions, you'll do one or two actions and then it will pass to the next person and the next person. It carries around like this until someone chooses not to do any actions, at which point they pass. They cannot do any more actions at all for the rest of the generation. Once all players have passed, that ends the action phase. So with the actions all covered, let's now go back to the final phase of the generation, which is our production. So the first thing to do is any energy gets moved into heat. So you cannot really store energy. It gets converted and becomes heat. Then you'll go through each resource in turn. So first we have our mega credits. Now these are slightly different because you actually get your terraforming rating plus your production in mega credits. So my terraforming rating is currently 24. So I'd have 24 plus two, so 26. So I would take 26 in these chrome cubes here. Then steel, I'm on zero, so I would get zero. Titanium, I would get two. Greenery, I'm on one, so I'd get one plant. Energy, two. And then heat, one. So that would be my production complete. It's important to know that all of these can go above 10. So if I wanted to have 11 production in plant because I'd gone up that high I would mark the 10 and then also the 1 so that would be my 11. It's important to note that you can lose mega credit production as well but you can never go below minus 5. If you were trying to play something that would cause you to go below minus 5 you cannot play it. So you just keep playing like this until the temperatures at plus 8 all nine oceans are out and you get the oxygen to 14%. That then means it's the final generation, at which point you will score. But before you score, you get one final chance, once you finish the generation, to convert your plants into greenery tiles. So you'll do that and then score. So, so you will do that in turn order and then you will score up. So you'll start with a base of your terraforming rating along the track here. You'll then add on points for your milestones and awards. You'll score points for your tiles that you've placed. Each greenery tile is one victory point and each city tile is worth one victory point for each adjacent greenery tile, no matter who the owner is. You'll then also score points for your card. So for instance, this card gives two points. Once you've scored up all your points, just moving along the track to represent them, whoever has the most wins the game. 
And that is how to play Terraforming Mars by Stronghold Games. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And of course, if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.